Hey guys, my name is William and I'll be your speaker today. Again, I hope you guys are enjoying our geometry series so far and stay on the watch for future videos. Now let's get started. Okay, if you haven't watched part one of this lecture yet, please check it out right here. This video would not make any sense if you don't watch part one. Let's start with the concept of concurrency. When three or more lines intersect at one point, they are concurrent. As seen in the diagram on the right, these three lines are concurrent at their point of intersection. Furthermore, these concurrencies will also create special points in triangles. Now let's talk about theorems related to concurrencies. First up is the concurrency of perpendicular bisectors theorem. Perpendicular bisectors of the size of a triangle are concurrent at a point that is equidistant from all of the vertices of the triangle. As seen in the diagram, the three perpendicular bisectors are concurrent at point P. PA is also equal to PB and PC in length. The point of concurrency for perpendicular bisectors is also known as the circumcenter. The circumcenter is always inside the triangle. Since the circle is outside of the triangle and all three vertices of the triangle are on the edge of the circle, we can say that the circle is circumscribed about the triangle. This is also why this point of concurrency is called the circumcenter. Now let's move on to the concurrency of angle bisectors theorem. Essentially, the angle bisectors are concurrent at a point that is equidistant from all three sides of the triangle. Remember that when we're referring to points being equidistant, we're always referring to the perpendicular distance, which is always the shortest distance as well. As seen here, angle bisectors AP, BP, and CP are all concurrent at point P while px is equal to py and pz, showing that the point of concurrency is equidistant from all three sides. The point of concurrency of angle bisectors is also known as the incenter. Like the circumcenter, the incenter is always inside the triangle. It can also be used as the center of a circle that is inscribed within the triangle. This also explains why this point is called the incenter. Now moving on to medians. The concurrency of the medians theorem states that the distance between the point of concurrency of the medians and the vertex is two thirds the distance that of the vertex to the opposite side's midpoint. This is a very important property useful in geometry calculations. Just remember that the distance from the vertex to the point of concurrency is double that the distance from the point of concurrency to the midpoint of the opposite side. The point of concurrency for medians is also more commonly known as the centroid. The centroid is always inside the triangle, and as previously mentioned, the 2 to 1 ratio property stands for all centroids within all triangles. The last concurrency theorem is on altitudes. The point of concurrency for altitudes in a triangle is known as the orthocenter. The orthocenter can be in, on the edge of, and outside of the triangle. If the triangle is acute, the orthocenter will be inside the triangle. If it is right, the orthocenter will be on the edge of the triangle, and if the triangle is obtuse, it will be outside of the triangle. Let's sum things up for the properties of concurrencies within triangles. First off, perpendicular bisectors are concurrent at a point known as the circumcenter. The circumcenter can also be used as the center of a circle that is circumscribed about the triangle. On the other hand, Angle bisectors are concurrent at a point known as the incenter. The incenter can be used as the center of a circle that is inscribed within the triangle. Medians are concurrent at a point called the centroid. The distance from the vertex to the centroid is two thirds that of the distance from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Last but not least, altitudes are concurrent at a point known as the orthocenter. The orthocenter can be inside the triangle if the triangle is acute, on the edge of the triangle if the triangle is right, and outside of the triangle if the triangle is obtuse. Now let's move on to inequalities in a triangle. The corollary to the exterior angle theorem states that the exterior angle of a triangle must be greater in measure than each of the remote interior angles of the triangle. This is pretty intuitive, as the measures of the two remote interior angles of the triangle add up to be the measure of the exterior angle. This is based on the exterior angle theorem. Therefore, we know that the measure of the two remote interior angles must be less than that of the exterior angle. Moving on to more theorems. This theorem states that if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, the longer angle corresponds to the larger side. Just remember that the larger angle always corresponds to the larger side in a triangle. The same thing goes for the converse of that theorem. Remember that the larger side lies opposite the larger angle. Our last triangle inequality theorem states that the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be larger than the length of that third side. This property is often used to determine if three segments can be used to form a triangle. Try this on three different segments with varying lengths yourself and see if you can form triangles by using this theorem. All right, let's sum things up. Today we learned about concurrencies related to perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors, medians, and altitudes. We also learned about special points of concurrency as well as their properties. Last but not least, we also covered four theorems related to inequalities within triangles. And that's all for today's video. As always, thank you so much for coming to this lecture and we hope to see you in future videos.